Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is the second video in the series Getting Started at Flexible Blended Teaching, uh, where we need, may need to deal with students that are both on and off campus. And this is about communication. The first type of communication we're going to talk about is you, the instructor or lecturer, providing guidance to your students. Why do we need to do it? Well, it has been noted during the early part of this COVID crisis that students have been confused when online about what is expected of them. It's really important just that they're very clear that they're uh, it's very clear that they un or they understand clearly from week to week what it is we want them to do. So I would say that we need to provide them with a regular message weekly, probably at the start of every week, uh, indicating the list of materials that you're going to provide, the purpose of those materials, whether some of those materials are core or optional. And by the way, you shouldn't provide them with too much materials. That's been seen to be a cause of problems with students where, where they have so much choices, they don't know where to start. So if you are going to give them a lot of materials, make sure you indicate what is core and what is optional. And if there are going to be any activities during the week, that, and if those activities are going to be graded. Okay, this is the image that I have here is just a simple image in a Moodle virtual learning environment where somebody is posting a message to the students and this will go out to the student's email. So that needs to be done on a regular basis to give them complete clarity. So what will you need to, what skills will you need? Well, you need to be able to ex access your virtual learning environment Find the, the specific module or course that you're teaching and go in there and find the news or announcement area and then post a message in that. You need to learn those skills. OK, the next thing is interaction between the student and the lecturer. And you could think of it in terms of taking questions from the students. The students, there's no way you're going to give them complete clarity either on your message for the start of the week or from your content, there are going to be things that they're not going to be sure of. So they need to be able to get to you. They need to be able to ask, ask, ask questions, OK? Now, these should come through the virtual learning environment or learning management system and through a discussion forum. Uh, do discourage email. If they email you, you will tend to email back and then you will be increasing your workload without really getting from the bang from your book you need. Remember, if they ask a question, chances are that many others in the class have the same issue as well. So it's easier if they put it through the discussion forum and you answer it in the discussion forum because that's valuable to everybody. Remember, that's asynchronous communication. They may ask a question. You may come back a while later and respond to it. OK, now I would say you need, do need to respond fairly quickly. OK, students need to feel that you're there, but I would say not necessarily too quickly. Remember, a good thing in uh, doing an online course or a, a flexible course is to give the students the impression of your presence. Let them know that you're there, particularly if you're there, if they need you. OK, so you do need to respond fairly quickly, but it's also good that you develop a certain, what would you say, uh, group bonding or group support in the classroom. So if you just leave it a while, other students may uh, respond and do encourage them to respond. OK, but you do have to watch out for other students responding in error that may be leading people astray. So watch out for erroneous responses. Now. Uh, the skills you'll need for this, one of the skills you'll need is to recognize the messages that come through the discussion forum. This is an image of an email that might come into somebody from, say, Moodle, uh, a Moodle forum. OK, and you'll notice that there's links in that. And there's one particular link I draw your attention to. It's the reply. Now, the way this is structured, you should be able to recognize, learn to recognize the messages coming into your email that are from the discussion forum. Because remember, they'll be stored on the discussion forum. If you were to delete this message, it would still be there. So you can note, OK, this question is there. I will probably need to answer this in the next 24 hours if some other student doesn't answer it. The links in this can be quite useful because you can click on a link to reply. It's not the same as using reply on your email where the message may go straight back to the student. 
may or may not, but you don't want to reply by email. But if you use the links in this, it will bring you to the virtual learning environment uh, and you can reply in there in the forum. So learn to recognize it and use those links. So finding and recognizing questions. Oh, the other thing is you may go into the virtual learning environment, have to find the four. You may do that once a day, go in there and see are there any questions there. That's the nice thing about coming out to your email. If you didn't get any in the email, you know there's no questions there. So you need to be able to recognize the questions. You need to be able to respond to the questions. And these last two here, your online presence and encouraging students, they're really habits in a way, a habit of being regularly available for your students, encouraging students to, le to support each other not technical skills as such. Okay, now the third part of the communication is interaction between classmates. Um, to some extent, what we want to do is replicate the campus peer support. Now, you may have students on campus and students off campus. The students on campus are probably fine. It's generally been found that students on campus don't use these forums at all, don't use the electronic discussion because they meet each other. Uh, but for the ones that are off campus, uh, it may be important for them. Uh, so you may want to divide them into groups because if you have very large classes, it's very hard to get to know everybody. So you may need to break them into groups. And maybe you'll keep your off-campus students uh, in separate groups because you know the ones on campus won't use the, the facilities. So smaller groups may work best, but they won't contribute unless you encourage them to contribute. So it may be worth asking them to, um, you know, at the start of the, so the start of the module or course, introduce themselves and say what their hobbies are or something like that but encourage them to interact with each other now what skills will you need in order to facilitate this well you need to be able to set up a new discussion forum so how do you do that in your virtual learning environment you may need to organize the students into groups as well uh, uh, and also, you may need to hit a, hit a setting in the discussion group so it works just for groups so they can can only see the contributions from their group to facilitate smaller discussion or smaller group discussion. Now, there's no harm in ex encouraging external tools like WhatsApp or something like that as well. Um, and as I say, you ne may need to try and build them as a community, encourage them to just get friendly with each other online. Okay. Now that's the end of the second video. The third video coming up next will be about providing content for your students.